Hiya folks and welcome back to the Rax Pack 2. Now, it's been a fair while since I actually played. Um, you guys have mostly been watching Backlog and I think for this last week or two uh, you guys didn't have anything because I had been sick and I ran out of my Backlog and if you were with me for my stream I explained a lot of that. Um, but, first day back on the job so... <laughs> Let's get on with things. I did end up finishing the elevator, or rather getting it to a working state. Um, so if you follow me down here... Ta-da! So this exists because, unfortunately, moving platforms in the Minecraft engine is janky at best. Uh, I think the person who has best done elevators up to this point has been McJetty. Um, but this is like a seat to keep me attached. <laughs> Otherwise I get hurt uh, going up and down this elevator. But if we take a look, it will send me down in this very weird fashion. As you can see, this is the kind of jankiness that we're talking about. Still pretty cool though. Still pretty cool. The fact that you can do this at all is pretty cool. Um, it eventually settles and uh, you start moving at a reasonable pace. Also, I got the information wrong last episode. Uh, you can't attach anything to the top of these elevator platforms. You can only attach other uh, wicker pieces, uh, minecart rails, redstone, and I think that's it. But you can't put like levers or anything, just redstone and just rails. Which is why this minecart on this platform works. And there we go, we're at the first stop actually. Yes, there are multiple stops along this journey. This is the slime room that I made all that time ago that I said I would show you this episode. And here we go, doing that. Now the reason why you make these uh, rooms two and a half um, blocks tall is because full-size slimes are quite dangerous uh, and if you can restrict their movement all the better uh, which is what you do by having these cobblestone slabs up here but yes this is the slime spawning um, room if I had had the foresight to capture one of those small dudes in there you would have seen there's actually two layers to this, uh, which is why we can come down here. And we'll try to beat this guy up, although this guy seems... That guy had thorns and alchemy. Hello, truck. I can see you on my audio. Can't hear it very well because I have earphones now. My headphones broke while I was sick. And uh, I had to get some earphones, so I got some Bluetooth earphones, and I can see it on my audio recording when something like a truck goes past. Oh no, the thing is there. Let me just recall that. And up it comes. It will take its time, so I won't uh, subject you to the full length of waiting for it to come back. It has returned. And down I go. And once again, I won't subject you to the full journey, so I'll see you at the slime pit. Okay, we have arrived again. So, um, is our friend still down here? No, but our grave is. That's nice. So the reason why um, we have two levels is it just increases the surface area in which a slime can spawn. And encourages more spawns, especially when you're dealing with a problem where uh, most of the caves in the area aren't lit up um, and it just so happens that I was lucky enough if 3g yeah that I had two adjacent slime chunks and I found that out while I was digging out the uh, the hallway in which to watch the area from which I now no longer need um, but you can see the remnants of it there and um, but I found that the bucket was still jumping when I was in this chunk. So it turns out two adjacent slime chunks. So very, very lucky. 
but uh, that's how we got the slime for the water wheel. Now, I said that we're on the first stop. This is actually cobblestone with a pist sticky piston behind it. Um, because of the way that the elevator works, it's either always going up or always going down. It's never actually properly stopped. Um, I've created a latch. Underneath here, the sticky piston is actually pushed out. So this, this platform block that I'm standing on is now resting on a block of cobble. And when I press this button, the sticky pistons swap. So the one underneath goes in and this one comes out. So what ends up happening is that the elevator will then continue downward and, it'll, and will go down to the next floor. But it will also make sure that on the way up, the elevator stops again. So I have to push the thing. It's just a very, very simple floor system. So if I do that, piston swap, and I continue going down. Now, not much further down, actually, is this area where we got our first diamonds over there. Um, so uh, that allows us to continue on with what we were going to do today which was we were going to um, install embers. Now the problem is we're surrounded by lava here, so I kind of have to figure out what I want to do in terms of that. Um, I'm not actually sure where we want to put the embers bore, but we have some way to go, yet we are at 12. We have to go down to bedrock, so we have to dig forward a bit in some direction and then go downwards. I'm feeling like it'll be this way just to avoid lava. Could be this way I guess. The embers bore is 3x3 three three, so it doesn't entirely matter. Now I think we'll go this way since we don't need those stairs anymore. So if we dig into here then hopefully we'll be able to avoid the lava along the way. We'll start the steps down here. And we just keep going down until we hit bedrock, I guess. And then we dig it out to be a 3x3 three three above the, the, the bedrock. And that will allow us to install our embers bore. Uh, embers is a pretty cool mod. I'll tell you what, here we are, we're already at the bedrock. Nice. We'll dig a bit forward. Yeah, see, that's why we dig a bit forward. Although I suppose we could fit it in here. Uh, do I want it that tight with the steers, though? Um, yeah, all right. It's fine. Oh, we can't anyway, because this one's here. We can stick it above. Let's just dig out a 5x5, five five, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. 5x5, five five, and then I'll be right back. Alright, I think that will do. We'll just, um, we'll put the, the bore here when we can, just on that block there. Uh, and that will count, that'll be fine. But now we actually have to make the bore in the first place, which is what I did the whole elevator thing for. <laughs> it's so that we could come up and down here from the embers bore once it's installed. And you'll know what that means if you have no idea what I'm talking about um, once we actually get there. As you can see, the button is just one big redstone torch chain. Everything I've done in terms of this elevator has been vanilla redstone. And uh, I'll give you a proper look around as we go back up, I think, if my pickaxe lasts. It takes a while for the signal to reach the top, but there you go. <laughs> it made it. Because, of course, chunks are not vertical. Well, there is some vertical chunkage going on. But, oh. <laughs> I've busted it. That's no good. And I have to get in this minecart or I will die. That's not even a joke. That's just the janky nature of elevators. One that is this tall. Um, 
it kind of smooths out and then as it gets to the top it gets janky again and I think it actually has something to do with the sound effects or something like that because the jankiness starts exactly when the sound effects begin because as you can see it's actually quite smooth on the way back up but we'll get to a point where the sound effects start and it'll start to get a bit weird any second now yeah oh wow it actually didn't be weird at all way to prove me wrong game gosh uh i broke the wrong cobblestone piece <laughs> i'm gonna have to fix that but while we're up here we may as well create the boar if we can huh so let's see ember's boar is a mechanical core, three iron ingots, two copper, and kamenite bricks. Now kamenite is clay plus sand. You know how we can get plenty of sand. Hooray. Um, do I have the gravel? That's the question. No, I do not actually have the gravel right now. I also have a lot of junk in my inventory. I'm going to eat some beef jerky. Oh, I can't eat any beef jerky. Have some slime balls. Have some redstone. I've got plenty of clay. That's good. Dirt. Oh, I got so much stuff. Have some rope and buttons and life essence and gold nuggets are we good we're mostly good with these axles in here and this iron helmet in here that's the one I would have got from that uh, slime that I killerated that drawer of cobble it's full why don't I have a shovel sworn I had one. Never mind. Um, I certainly do have a shovel in here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a new pickaxe though. Uh, iron? I, I, iron? Oh, look at me being preemptive. I must have done that, um, a week ago. That's how long it's been since I have played. Right. The caps. And ingots. We need to get some gravel. Has there been any gravel under here? It's got to be, right? Some gravel somewhere. These stairs still exist. So, uh, I guess I'll go on a gravel hunt and I'll be back. And in case for those that missed the uh, lesson, the reason I'm after gravel is because gravel is easier for me to find in my area at the moment. And I can turn gravel directly into sand, which is what we need for that caminite. Uh, so I'm just graveli graveling. I'm grabbing what gravel I can and uh, we'll turn that all into sand and flint. Which is lovely. Thank you, BWM. right back okay plenty of gravel get all we have to do now is be good at basketball oh we full up no not really why'd that happen go up there I said go up there what the heck why you know make sand? Maybe I'm not. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering, it, it might have just been resting on the hopper, so it didn't quite count as being thrown in. Uh, and I imagine that's just a conflict between um, the mod that makes items sit on the ground. And. Uh, gosh, got a lot of flint. Um, and. Uh, BWM. 
so clay and we'll go through it this way <laughs> i could look up kamenite or i could just follow the crafting chain um sure make me 64 kamenite blend so steers are just kamenite bricks and a steer pattern i imagine and that means we should break you up into 16s. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Have two, have 16. Have two, have 16. And I know I could break that up even further, but meh. I'll be back once these are cooked. Caminite steers get. There we go. Right, I'm getting quite hot standing next to those. <laughs> uh, embers bore, we need copper, iron, and lead plate, and compass. And quite a bit more iron, huh? So that was one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four for the compass. Uh, and lead plate. Is four lead for right now because we have to use a tinker's hammer to do it speaking of a tinker's hammer I don't think we have a tinker's hammer do we but it's a lead ingot and four more iron so one two three four and one dang it <laughs> One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There we go. Fifteen. Oof. Should make that an even sixteen. There we go. And, uh, coal. So may as well make that eight. Go with three coal. You. You. You, you, and you. Great, I'll be back once all that's done. Okay, we should have everything we need. Four lead, one plate. That will go straight down to one lead to one plate eventually. Uh, but we have to get there first. So, do this. That gets us the mechanical core. And then it was, oh, we needed copper. I forgot the copper. That should be no problem. And at this point, I'm actually just going to waste a piece of coal, because why not? All right. <laughs> Crisis averted. Three lead, four caminite bricks. What did I do wrong? It's not three lead, it's three iron. Come on, me. There we go. That is one ember boar. Um, so this baby will also need something else, and I can't remember the name of it, so we will just look for it here. It is a mechanical core, maybe, machine accessor. I think it's both. Might be both. Might be both. We'll go with the mechanical core first. So we know what that is. That's eight iron, four lead. Cook up another eight lead. No, we'll, it's a waste. It's a huge waste. Uh, we will cook up exactly eight iron though. Use this charcoal I've got laying around. Um. Because the embers bore itself does not have, it only has one slot to input and output. But you can, if you have only the core, you can only do one of those functions. That's why you require a mechanical core, because the mechanical core can do both. Um, so it's kind of a, uh, a it's, it is definitely a requirement. You could do it manually without a mechanical core, but then the, it's kind of like, why? <laughs> it's kind of like, why? Why would you do that to yourself? So we are going to make a couple of chests. Uh, do 
Do I have a random hopper laying around? I don't need to make chests. I keep doing this to myself. I have plenty of chests. <laughs> Here we go. We got an oak chest. Uh, but do I have a random hopper? It would be in there if I did and there wasn't one. So, there's some extra iron. So we only have to cook up two. Uh, which we will. That will give us a hopper. The hopper is for fuel and the um, chest is for the output. So if I come over here I can make my lead plate. I can make my compass. Eh. Compass. And then I can make my mechanical core. Ta-da! And then I can make my hopper. So if we all take this down to the bottom. Alright, we've arrived. And yes, I actually managed to place that cobblestone on the right spot. <laughs> on my way down. Oh gee. Um, ember bore. Bam. And that's an ember bore. So it's a 3x3 three three and it has these little bore plates at the bottom. It's like a series of saws and uh, this is the single input I was talking about but if we put a mechanical core here this will allow us to input and output. If I chuck a bunch of coal in there our ember bore starts running. If we are lucky because I don't actually have an ember gauge on me um so I can't tell what the ember is like in the area. This boar will get us ember, guaranteed. Uh, it's just a matter of when and how much. <laughs> um, because the ember in an area fluctuates uh, and I would be able to better tell whether this was a good spot for right now if I had an at atmospheric gauge, but I didn't bother making one because I know at some point we will get ember from this. So, um, it'll eventually go into this chest. I can promise you that. <laughs> At some point. Uh, and when we have Ember, we can move on with the next part, which is to set up the, um, first of all, the power supply, which uses Ember, and then the ore doubling process, which uses uh, the stamper, the stamp base, bin, um, what else? Copper cells, ember emitters, ember receptors, melter. We will need a melter. Um, all sorts. All sorts of fun things. And that will be pretty cool. And I think that will be our first... Because we... Um, will, will be our first crypt. It will be the Kamenite crypt. I think that will be fun. And we can use these Kamenite uh, and other ember based bricks to make a cool mausoleum facade for to go over the top of it and it'll be the first crypt that we build won't that be fun <laughs> we'll actually get to some building in this in the series it'll be wonderful anyway i'm gonna sit here for a while and wait for some ember to show up and then i will return all right so i'm just finishing off making the last of what we need is for what we mean to go on with um a couple of iron plates here and that should be all we need for the ember activator uh, which is the core of what we're going to do now i'm going to just dump all the stuff up here uh let's sleep first if yep it's night because <laughs> of course it is um I'm just going to dump it all up there to show you as we mean to go on uh, and then next episode we'll pick out a spot to actually start building the crypt but uh, oh look this is all growing that's wonderful um, I was wondering if they were ever going to grow but we'll put it over here so the ember activator is what turns ember into power uh, and then in my knapsack I have a bunch of stuff that we need in order to keep going ah uh, hello zombie I don't know where you came from my friend 
but we will be dealt with forthwith. Get ye hints. Okay. So, now that that person who is trying to stop our demonstration is out of the way, the Melter is the star of the show. And the Melter turns your ore into fluid uh, metal. And how do you get the fluid metal to become not fluid? You use a stamper. And this is the base. Uh, we will put the base here, I guess. Good enough for me. And the stamper can go on top. Whoops. It actually needs a block space. So we'll use these steers to help with that. And that's our stamp on the bottom there. Now this needs to be powered and this needs to be powered. Uh, and that is something that I forgot to do. We also need a fluid extractor. We'll need a fluid pipe. Ta -dum. So that will put the fluid from the melting into the stamp base and the stamp will take one of these, in which case we are going to trial it with a ingot um, plate. We also have a plate plate, which will allow us to make plates out of one ingot rather than four. Um, but if I put the ember in my inventory, hit, hit, I will throw you in. No? Oh, I'm dumb. I remember. I remember I've done it. I've done it wrong. And just for this demonstration, I'm actually going to, um, well, I may as well not. I'm going to need one in the future. I was going to cheat a hopper and but I need a hopper to put the, the crystals in there and um, so I'm gonna need five more iron I'm also gonna need a couple of things which I forgot to make <laughs> go figure and uh, ember I try and be so organized but then I always forget something I'm gonna need two emitters and I'm gonna need two receptors uh, so um, that's one lot of Two copper and two iron because that gives me four which is more than enough and then receptors are two iron and two copper the same again two copper and two iron and then I'm gonna need a couple of carbonate plates is that right yes that is correct so we're going to need one two one, one. Right. I will be back once these are cooked up and made. It's always tempting to cheat in a let's play to keep the ball rolling. And then I have to remind myself that at the end of the day, you guys actually don't care as long as I'm genuine to myself. Uh, and that's what you care about when it comes to the let's play. So... I feel like a lot of us Let's Players feel a lot of pressure to create something which we think is in the best interests of you guys, but often we are so wrong. <laughs> so thank you for putting up with that. Um, I have my Ember emitters, I have my, ah right, I was going to make a hopper. Need that hop, hop, hopper. Because without it, well, we can't even get the ball rolling to begin with. So up we go. And my stuff is over here. So if we put the hopper, whoops, over here, nope, incorrect, here, we can now put crystals and shards in there and I went back down and got some more crystals and shards and you can see it's now burning them if I had a ember dial on there which is compass paper and copper uh, we could see exactly how much ember is in there at the moment quite frankly it doesn't really matter 
Um, but if we put a couple of ember emitters down, because we will need both of these, and an ember receptor, this will be far nicer looking <laughs> uh, when it comes time to um, put this in the crypt. But we will need to say we want this to be hooked to this, and this to be hooked to that. I think that's going to work, or... Yeah, I think it's that way. I think I did it right the first time. Um, targeting. Yeah, you can clear your targeting. Oh well, whatever. Uh, if I get carbonite levers out of here, we put them on you and on you. Psh, ugly, but whatever. We'll fix that. Uh, we should start seeing Ember move if I did it right, which I don't think I did. <laughs> uh, Shift right click, right click, shift right click, right click. I'm confused. You connect. Yeah, I'm certain that was right. See, the high-pitched and then the low-pitched means I did it right. Normally there's a message, though. I'm confused. Maybe it doesn't send it when I don't have things to do. I'm going to go downstairs, get some sleep, and come straight back up. Elucent may have changed some stuff. Um, it just used to send Ember all the time, whether it needed it or not. But it might have changed to do it only when it needs it now. So if I come up here and I throw some iron ore in. No, all right. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am the worst. I am the worst. Ember emitters need to go up here, folks. That's where they need to go. Oops. So we can turn both of those on. Now if I do this, we get ember flowing. Hooray! And ember flows look very cool. Check that out. That one's doing a sweet loop. Um, it's a very pretty mod. Very pretty mod. And as you can see, it's melting up my iron. My urn. And... Now, if I put this lever on here, it's a fluid extractor. It's going to extract the iron in into the air, and then, bam, turns it into an ingot. I'm actually going to get four ingots out of this. And so that is ore doubling, which is pretty neat. And I can also show you guys this. Take this plate off. Thank you very much. Plate stamp on. And then put a piece of iron in there and we should get two plates out of this. And I'm going to need those two plates because the next thing is to make a mixer centrifuge, which is how you get further into embers. And we get a plate. Two plates, in fact. So we have quartered the cost of making plates and we've doubled the rate at which we actually now get iron ingots. Oh, I should take you off. <laughs> I don't want a whole junk load of um, iron plates right now. I do, however, want a whole junk load of iron ingots. Now there is one last piece to this because you'll see that they are flying everywhere. Uh, we actually should make a bin or just one plate and six iron which we happen to have been making in the process of tutorializing embers uh, so that we can focus on base building next episode if I do this and this and then that we get a bin and the functionality 
of this device is such that if I put a bin below the stamp, the output will go directly into that bin from now on. So if I click those, make this thing run, you'll see it's not flying everywhere, but it's going into the bin. And I can click that bin to get the stuff out of it. There we go. Um, if I want to see what's actually in the bin, um, I can actually just put a item extraction and then a pipe and then a chest um, to, to pull things out of that. And that will work just fine. But this episode is well and truly over time. <laughs> But I thought it was important to get all of this out of the way for this episode um, so that we can continue as we mean to go on. So, welcome back me to the land of recording and welcome back you to the land of watching. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.